like to next um, introduce our next speaker, uh, Samani Rohini Pragya. Um, and uh, Rohini Pragya Samani is an associate professor at the Department of Nonviolence and Peace Studies at, at Jane Vishwa Bharati Institute. She's been a lecturer at Acharya Kalu Kanya Mahavidyalai, uh, professor of Jainology and comparative philosophy and religion there since 2004. She's also been a visiting instructor in the Department of Religious Studies at Florida International University. And in addition to that, she is an initiate Jane Summoney, which is like a, a nun, uh, for the last 22 years, and is a disciple of the Shvetambara Terapant Guru, His Holiness Acharya Sri Mahashamana Ji. Please welcome Summoney Rohini Pragya. So my topic is Sandhi, translated as Jangchen, one of the translations, the Jain canonical contemplative practice and transcendental realization. Sandhi Viditta, I am Sandhi Iti Adakku. These are the few uh, partial versions of Acharan Sutra, the first book of Jain canonical literature, that threw some light on the notion of Sandhi. Jangchen is one of the translations of this term Sandhi, it is known as the meeting point of bone, muscle, and sinews. These are our eight types and are said to be sensitive centers having abundance of vitality. In yogic literature, terms such as juncture, aperture, hole, veil, lotus, fluxus, etc. are used synonymously. Sandhi or the marma, that is translated as psychic centers, are the places in the body as the focal points of meditation. By focusing on sandhi, the mind shifts from the external stimuli received by sensory organs to various levels of internal awareness. The present paper is an endeavor to bring to light sandhi as an ancient Jain contemplative practice for transcendental realization. And I would suggest that terms such as intuition or insight are used in modern jargon for such realization. Before dwelling into Jain concept, I would like to bring a Hindu mythology. According to Hindu mythology, Hiranyakashyap gained a boon from Brahma due to which he could not be killed during the day or night, inside or outside the house, neither in the sky nor on land, neither in the heaven or in hell, by any weapon nor by human, deities, demons or animals. His terror became intense on this planet because of this boon, and for this, Nurse Simha, a hybrid form of human come blind, at the junction of day and night, at the threshold of the palace, which was neither inside nor outside, upon the lap and with the claws, finally was met to overcome the terror of Hiranyakasha. The element of Sandhi, that is juncture, here we notice in space, time, body, matter, together brings good by destruction of evil. Thus, mythologically, in pan-Indic tradition, sandhi, that is juncture or transition, implies something supernatural. If we look to the Acharan Sutra, the text, there are varied versions and six versions are available in regard to the notion of sandhi. Sandhi has been used as blemish, that is a, a, an ascetic who undertakes blemish because of some kind of carelessness. Sandhi is used as bone joint, and Sandhi at third place is used as contemplation or intention. And at the fourth version, Sandhi is used as transcendental awakening. And the, as a fifth version of Sandhi, it's, 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 Sandhi is, is explained as a one who has been realized, who is above all kind of parts. And finally, Sandhi has been also implied as a practitioner of practitioner of the path of three jewels. In this paper, the fourth aspect of Sandhi of the above stated six version indicates transcendental realization. One practicing renunciation in search of following absolute nonviolence overcome both violence and non-vigilance gets above the sensual pleasures and passions discovers Sandhi, says the Acharam Sutra. Here, Sandhi implies the karmic aperture conducive to the awakening of super sensitive consciousness and B, an organ of the body, which is the plexus, a connecting link with the vigilant interaction. This discovery of Sandhi comes with continued vigilance. The instance of Algai, that is Shiva, in the pond fits well for the 
Fit fits well that obstruct sky view. One inside such a pond must pond must constantly keep moving the hands to view sky as it quickly gets covered. And thus, Sandhi has been viewed as a blemish in first part of Acharam Sutra. So contemplation in Jainism teaches continued vigilance in external samiti and internal gupti activities. Further contemplation and renunciation are the three sides of the same point, and one without the other is incomplete. The text Acharam Sutra begins with the inquiry or the contemplative proposition as who am I? Renunciation of I and my consciousness with relations, body, and possession constitutes overcoming external sangha. Further, when one breaks the karmic bond associated with passions through vigilance, one overcomes internal sangha. So here, internal and external sangha are used in the form of blemish version. Breaking of external and internal sangha allows perception of juncture conducive to the state of self-realization. Here, I am now bringing the aspect of Sandhi with transcendental awakening or transcendental realization. Well, equipped with overcoming relational Sandhi, one who perceives this is the present moment of the body, perceives the sensation of pleasure and pain emerging in the body without involving in it. In and through the body, one perceives the psychic center and becomes vigilant. In the state of perception of the present moment of the body, mind ceases. Intensified perception begins in and through the body. Stabilized mind allows to perceive with the eye of consciousness and discloses an entirely new world. The vigilant one reverses the searchlight of intelligence, mind, and life force inward through a secret astral passage, the coiled way of Kundalini in the Kaitungist plexus, and upward through the sacral, the lumbar, the higher dorsal, cervical, and medullary plexus and the spiritual eye between eyebrows to reveal finally the presence of consciousness in the highest center that is Brahmarandra or the Sahasra Chakra in the brain. The state of reflection, division, delusion, illusion evolving with diverse state of mind vanishes. So, it, uh, so the emphasis on the perception part is, uh, is emphasized to bring this kind of transcendental realization where the perceiver perceives truth, enters into state of equanimity, unity, and the invisible com world comes to realization as consciousness directly meets reality. Transcendental realization does not happen through skills, reading, writing, listening. It happens only by exercising control over senses and mind. The notion of Atmanu Bhuti, Atmanu Bhav, Atma Darshan, implies a self-realization. King Parareshi, to admit the notion of soul as expounded by Mahavir asked Kumash Kishi to show him his self on his palm like a gooseberry placed on a palm. The initial difficulty is in identifying the problem. Soul's invisibility, according to Jainism, is not the problem of senses and mind. Soul manifests at a state of pure consciousness or, is, or at a state of thoughtlessness where senses and mind are subordinated. Thinking and self-knowledge never goes together. A competent mind is not the goal. The goal lies beyond the mind. Transcendental realization happens beyond senses and mind. Thus, suddenly, as a transcendental awakening, dissolves all the form identity and reaches the essence state, which is consciousness. It brings the state of experience apart from thoughtful and mindful state. Now, I would like to bring the notion of Sandhi as transcendental meaning. So, bringing a shift from awakening or awareness from realization towards the element of epistemology as available in gene sources. In the opinion of Malishya, the sensitive centers are the part of the body, are the parts of the body dominated by many soul points. Sandhi means plexus. For plexus, it is said that they consist of consciousness and are situated within sensitive centers. As the center of Jala, pond is known as Jalantra. The center of Vana, forest is known as Vanantra. The center of Parvat, the hill is known as Parvatantra. Similarly, the center of the physical body, due to the purity of soul points, is known as Antagat. Undivided self and direct knowledge are the two sides of the same point. Same point. Through perception of Sandhi, that is the prime centers of manifestation of consciousness, 
that is chakra in hatha yoga the light of transcendental knowledge spreads out of the karmic aperture in connection with clairvoyance the word sandhi has been used as as a current sorry that as a current that is efficient cause so now uh, now to take a epistemic concern about sandhi and this epistemic concern is in a in a transcendental form sandhi has been used as a current as an efficient cause and here sandhi is explained as an organ of the body or or a part of the body through which the clairvoyant knows the object any part of the body which becomes current or the psychic center which gets awakened become the reason through which the rays of super sensory knowledge am adopted trend transcendental realization turns body into efficient cause mind to become competent through such a sudden discovery or intuitive flashes of knowledge mind passes through three stages that is the stages of avadharana dharana and dhyana of which the first is to pay attention a process of just paying attention bringing that alertness the second step is of dharana in which there is a continued focus state and the third one is where where one transcend the mental aspect and enters into a state of consciousness where mind ceases and the meditative stages begin there mastering these three stages aims to break away from mental illusion and negligence nandi sutra narrates the entire mind training aspect it discusses four units of such training first unit consists of alpagrahi and bahugrahi the second of ekavidgrahi bahuvidgrahi the third with shipragrahi and chiragrahi and fourth one consists of the anishtagrahi and nishtagrahi of the four units the former consists of a narrow version while the later consists of a wider version in ancient jain literature such transcendental powers and mental competences are entitled as labdhis or yoga vibhutis being extraordinary in jain primary sources such powers are explained as limitless and stumbling sandhi becomes an instrumental cause of transcendental awakening that experiences soul body discrimination on on one hand and at the same time manifests many other body and mental abilities one such labdhi is known as sambhinda shroto ka labdhi This is a kind of buddhi labdhi, a spiritual, sp supernatural intellectual power. It is attained through maximum annihilation from subsidence of auditory sense veiling, veiling, articulate knowledge veiling, and other karma associated with its transformation, which is responsible for the anatomical structure of the main organs such as head, chest, abdomen, back, and the pairs of arms, thighs, and subordinate organs and fingers as well. and by the dint of which one give response to diverse types of sound a human being equipped with sambhinda shroto palabdhi is one who can take cognizance of all the five objects of sense organ through any one part of the body can distinctly cognize the diverse sounds produced simultaneously by the army of chakravarti in universal sound which is spread over the region of 12 bhujans that is what is spread in minds can take cognizance of all the five objects of the sense organ through any one sense organ of the body or can take the cognizance of all the five objects of the sense organ through principal or the secondary organs of the body and we can distinctly make the sound and can decipher diverse types of sound as well the contemplative journey in jainism begins with body mind and chitta body has the potential to become karna mind gets trained as shown in nandi sutras uh, vrittis and becomes competent through various skills of concentration and finally chitta moves beyond mind and transforms the consciousness from avaran vigna mithya darshan and saraga chitta it transforms into anavaran chitta nirvigna chitta samyak darshan chitta and vitarana chitta the basic function of chitta is not thinking it functions to experience wish feel truth that is uncovered free of interruption free of perversity and passion and in this uh, in this element of experiences jainism strongly admits the annihilation of karmas associated with with those realizations if we take a look at the modern psychology and the intuitive experiences of the knowledge that they talk immediate experiences in structuralist and gestaltist have different positions 
such experience is viewed in terms of insight and intuition as well. Insight has been explained as a means or an act of apprehending or sensing intuitively the inner nature of something. In standard parallels, it also means any self-awareness, self-knowledge, or self-understanding. And it has been bifurcated into sections as intellectual insight and emotional insight. Further, psychologists talks about situational insight as well. So along with intellectual and emotional insight, it talks of situational or environmentally stimulated insights. The important thing is in all these elements, insight could be defined as a novel, clear, compelling apprehension of the truth of something occurring without overt recourse to memories of past experiences. If we look, if, uh, if we look at understanding the function of intuition, it is nothing but it has two different connotations, which often, which often accompany this term intuition is A, the process, the, the one in which the process is unmediated and somehow mystical, and B, it is understood as a response to subtle clues and relationships apprehended implicitly and unconsciously. The former broadens on the unscientific and is not recommended, and the later hints on the several difficult but fascinating problems in the study of human behavior. This is how experiences, direct experiences and transcendental experiences are being touched in psychology as well. I would like to conclude thus with the realization of the Sandhi as explained in Jain canonical literature, feeling and knowing elements magnify to coordinate with one's conduct. Sometimes this training, this happens with training and other times it happens in tutoring. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Samani Ji. That was uh, absolutely wonderful presentation. I really enjoyed some of those points there and the dialogues with some of the modern psychological theory and everything. Very, very insightful. Thank you. I'm sure there'll be great comments on that.